Hello there, and welcome to another episode of StarCast. Today, our wellness warrior guest is Anne Beijing. Anne hails from Cologne, Germany, where she is currently the CEO and co-founder of Healing Hotels of the World, which is the only hotel association that focuses on healing properties. But like many of us, Anne's journey has been long and winding to bring her to her position today. And so Anne's going to share a bit of that with us. Welcome, Anne. Thank you. So let's start. Thank you, Lisa. And let's start with the winding. So um, my name is Anne Beijing, by the way, but it's fine. Beijing sounds very French, so that's okay. Okay. Um, so yes, um, it's a interesting thing because um, I think um, healing is something very natural. So so um, when 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 I uh, was um, raised in the 60s, I was born in the 50s, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and my, I'm very proud of my age, by the way. Good. So I was born in the early 50s, and that was a different timing all over the world, but especially in Germany. So um, if you are mm -hmm. a sensitive human being, uh, and all children are more or less sen very sensitive, you inhale a lot of energy, mm -hmm. you see things, you experience things that are not very... Um, good often and that was the case uh in in my country at that time so i remember very at a very very young age i was talking to people and they probably thought a little uh, about there must be more this can't be it this is boring you know everybody's just struggling and this is all really that was i was very maybe eight years old or something wow that's amazing um, that you were that perceptive already at eight yes I think that was very, um, I, I remembered that late, later, of course, and um, there was a milestone in my life um, when uh, uh, Kennedy was assassinated because, I mean, I could see that we didn't have a TV at home, but neighbors had a TV. And I looked at this and I thought, I want to become a journalist. And I didn't really know what that meant, but it was, it was an, a vision I had very early. And I think it was my I wanted to I opened the door to another world. In was it heart. the idea of reporting that attracted you or the no, story? It was, it was the, it, it was the understanding uh, that there is a, two things. There is a world out there. That was the first thing I saw from the United States, you know, via satellite. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it was really um, more being involved in something. I wanted to be, I wanted to, be, there was something I thought it's such an emo momentous uh, thing, um, and uh, and as you know later on I met some of the Kennedys. So whatever that means, I don't know. But it was very interesting. It was meant I to became, be. I became friends. Yeah. So, but really the thing was that um, and that and the next milestones obviously in my old age were the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. and I had my own guitar and I was writing my own songs and became somewhat in, in my heart an activist and um, and really always wanted to break out of the current situation. And that hasn't changed. Ask my team, ask anybody who's near me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, know um, you know that, you know me a bit. Um, so, um, but why healing? Because I thought uh, I didn't like the status quo at that time. And I still don't like the status quo often because I think um, we make us, little we don't live our greatness and i think mm -hmm. that really led me to a very you know i went to the to the states to san antonio, san antonio texas you know mm -hmm. to go to university there and then i i learned a lot of things a lot of things good things that were the hippie days the 70s mm -hmm. um and but also it really uh i traveled in the united states in 1970 you know on the greyhound bus mm -hmm sleeping in the bus, wow. visiting the, 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 the places uh, uh, during the day. Uh, and it really sparked my interest in different places. And it has never stopped. So after university, I went back to Germany and I did, um, started to be, be a copywriter and for, you know, for advertising agencies. And I, with that led me to journalism. Again, um, a, a wild thing because I came with the Green Party at the time, the founders of the Green Party invited me to be part of their group. So I, from there, I went into journalism, a mixture of politics and journalism and travel. 
And that's how the thing started. So always writing about my travel. I've, I think I've traveled pretty much the world. Oh, so you have traveled many places. Amazing. Everywhere, yes. But not at the Antarctica, which is a shame I have to go there because it's so silent there. But why is this so important? Because I wanted to see what's out there. But only today, Lisa, I understand that I was actually seeking something inside mm. of me. I was, you know, I was seeking something which I think I must have a faint memory from, I believe in former lifetimes. There is something so beautiful, which I couldn't find in the most beautiful place. And that was inside. So I, I that, that led me, I stopped journalism a bit when my daughter was born and, um, and I was a writer from home, but then started again. Um, started uh, to do marketing representations for hotels, um, for governments. I consulted many of the United States, uh, um, you know, governors, California, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, all of these places. Well, Anne, and that's a, that's a point there I'd like to hear more about. How did you go from being a journalist to marketing hotels? That doesn't seem like a logical jump. Well, there are two sides of the, of the desk, right? So one is writing. And then from, um, I remember um, I was bored to be scheduled around the globe, being a journalist, writing about things people wanted me to write about. I didn't mm. like that. Mm. That was really, I felt, excuse the word, but abuse. And I abused myself because, you know, it, I felt something and it was boring. So I, from this, I, uh, I went into being a bit more polit politically involved. And again, it didn't satisf satisfy me. It didn't satisfy my, satisfy my true need. So, and then I went back to PR. I thought, okay, if I help the, 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 um, the government, or let's say the tourism boards to, to, to bring people uh, into a different place, that was my intention. And since I've been such a prophetic writer, people know me and they ask me, you know, would you consider to become our marketing representative? Hmm. And I said, yes. Of course, they started with Western Australia. Who would not have said yes, right? <laughs> You have to start yes. somewhere. Yes, and it was absolutely beautiful, um, apart from politics, but the place was beautiful. And what I, I remember, um, people were laughing their head you know, out of me because I was trying to tell, talk to them about meditation, you know, bringing them to places, especially in Australia, where you could meditate because I could feel the earth energy. I was so happy when I was sitting there in meditation, but that I thought I'm crazy. Well, you know, sure. At that time, so people weird. weren't meditating, right? That wasn't no, the thing, right? That wasn't the thing. But, but it, you know, so one thing led to the other. And really, I remember some of the people, especially in Ohio, I remember meeting uh, Dick Celeste, the government, the governor there at that time. He was amazing. And he was very open to, you know, to mm -hmm. seeing into things in a different way. So it, this is how it works. And I was always, and later Elizabeth came into my life, my life, and we both she has been a yogi all her life. I had become a yogi in that time, meaning my regular uh, meditation practice and so on. And I always wanted to give meaning to travel mm. because I found it so boring, Lisa. I mean, I found, I remember I was traveling with my daughter Eva in Australia. I represented Australia as well. So we were invited in the Northeastern part in one of the most incredible places in the rainforest. Mm. Um, and it was a group by, um, um, by a German uh, travel organizer. And these people looked so depressed. And even I was sitting there, she was 15, 16. We were thinking, why is that? Why are they so, so depressed? This is so beautiful here, but they were drinking and eating this loads of stuff mm. and so on. I thought we have to change this. You know, they could just be, open their heart, talk a bit more about themselves, having a meaningful conversation. And not, so that was, you know, one thing really led to the other. And then at one point when we were, Eva and I were visiting the Ananda in Himalayas, um, who the owner is a soulmate, we found out later. So we are, you know, joining a similar spiritual path. Um, and Ashok understood that. And here we found something which I thought, this is it a luxurious place where the ego part, all the luxurious things we need, we think we need, plus a, a very solid spiritual practice uh, with great masters, great teachers, no spiritual blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That was the combination. That's where we found healing hotels of the world. Is that picture <clears throat> behind no, you sorry. from Ananda? 
this it's actually an hour and a half away from the Ananda. So you trek in far into the Himalayas, into the mountains. This is probably about 2000 meters altitude. And when you see in the back there, you could see the, the um, maybe up to 4000. Um, very beautiful. Well, for podcast listeners, uh, Anne is sitting in front of a lovely vista of the Himalayas in the distance. Um, and it's perfect for when you know Anne and you think of Anne with the ray of sunlight coming down over her head, that really Ooh. represents who she is. <laughs> so how many years ago was that experience with Ava, did you say, when you had that you felt this need to sort of change travel? I think honestly, that must have been um, in the mid nineties, you know, at that time I was also, oh, I forgot Arizona. You know, the same thing happened in Arizona because that was after that we went to Arizona and Ava and me and I was giving a, a presentation at the government's governor's conference and I was speaking about their healing energy in Sedona mm -hmm. and their place. Oh yeah, and, sure. Yeah, okay, but no, they didn't understand. So that no. was must have been in the mid nineties. Um, so you calculate for me, it's what, 20 mm -hmm. some years ago. Yes. So the vortexes in Sedona were not a known issue yet, I guess. In a way, for the hippies. Yeah. Right. For the hippies. Not the only. Right. serious people. <laughs> so, so when you decided to focus on um, healing journeys, um, how was your reception? I mean, did people just think you were a little batty or did they get it? Interesting, um, Lisa, um, I think I have always been, I mean, you know, I studied business, I, you know, I have a business background as well, I have a marketing background, so I could, I could mix the two of easily, and I'm a writer as well, but um, I, I, I had to learn, um, I was so enthusiastic, I thought, why don't people under, I'm an Aquarian as well, mm -hmm. so one thing about Aquarians is I hear from many people, we always think people understand us and we don't understand why don't, they don't understand us. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm not alone, so I was happy to hear that. But it was a mixture of people, you know, um, you know, the visionaries among us, they, they knew what I was talking about. Like mm -hmm. my friend Claudia Roth at that time, right. you know, a big, big sh shot at the leading hotels of the world. She always, you know, supported me very, very early thinking, you know, you were doing something so incredible. But I have been really, I have hit my head very hard. Mm. People were, uh, and then you have two women, um, you know, bringing a company up, you know, with mm. our outer investment, just us. There was, a, it was a bit of a ride. I mean, a very interesting ride, I have to say. And, but we would have, we had fantastic supporters as well from all parts of life. And Anne, so you're I'm speaking very about your partner, Elizabeth, for a listener. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth's education is different than yours, correct? Yes, she has actually owns a PhD in, in, in art history and, uh, and has been, you know, all her life in art and also working as a meditation teacher, as a life coach, many things. And that's what she brought into, uh, into the business because when we met, I met her as a meditation teacher and we decided mm. that's it, we'd be together. And, uh, and I remember we went to, there's another interesting site. We went to the Silicon Valley in 1999 mm. and we had prepared a program with, which was called uh, um, uh, New Learning Through Ancient Wisdom. And that was really based on my experience in Australia with living, you know, working with Aborigines and knowing, understanding their spirituality and bringing that momentum, that knowing together with a fantastic life coach from Australia. So here we go, you know, putting together first class uh, flights with Qantas, uh, uh, this, this beautiful life coach um, and my friend and elder, Aborigine elder together in one program for the top leading world leading business people, you know, for I think four days in the Australian bush to learn to open their hearts. Wow. We went to Silicon Valley, we went to Apple, Yahoo, Google at that time. Unfortunately, that was exactly the at the brink where the internet, you know, went mm -hmm. down. Right, remember, right before the first dot com bust. Yeah. Right. So, so that busted. But it was always this idea, and, and my not willing to give in or to give up, trying to convince people, listen, there is more, mm -hmm. and that's my message for me myself even today. You know, we cannot, especially we talk about travel. You and I had this discussion again and again, Lisa. Yes. 
about wellness and about pampering people and that's all beautiful but there is so much more and i think corona gave us the chance to stop thinking um oh great now we have a vaccine we go back to old life mm -hmm. i don't even think that's a good idea no, I, th I think you may be right. And I want to come back to the Corona issue or how it's affected us. But I'm interested in hearing more, Anne, about how you had the inner strength or wisdom to follow that intent that you had, you know, just you kept saying to yourself, this isn't right, there's more and many young people do not know how to listen to that inner voice. Where do you think you got the courage to do that? Mm. I probably brought that with me, Lisa. Um, I don't know. Um, and if you are like life circumstances in my case or in many other people's cases, I mean, there are people today in the States, in New York, in Los Angeles, in Germany, they grow up in circumstances that, that are less, not so happy, right? Mm -hmm. So even, you know, in my case, my parents did their best, best, best. And I'm very grateful for them. But there would be circumstances where, so for me, there was only one way, and that was the way out, mm -hmm. out of this. And 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 I think I had so many, <clears throat> I had so many um, um, friends. Also, I, I was I found beautiful people on my journey who helped me, supported me. I learned healing techniques. You know, I learned to meditate. I'm on my spiritual path, so I have my master. I learn every day. The, I'm very deep into the. Uh, ancient Indian scriptures, I, I love uh, Buddhism, all of that. I'm, I'm completely non-dogma, but I, I love to listen to the ancient philosophers and teachers and, and understand that each one of those have gone through tremendous situations. How, and, and that's how you develop strength. And, and I, I be honest with you, I, there were times where I was struggling mm, of course. really badly really bad you know if i can say today who saved my life that was my daughter really because the birth of, of eva gave me the strength to 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 really say oh no okay mm -hmm. here, here's this that's the way because there are times when you are feeling and and i bet every second person on earth feels alone and not understood why because we are not alike mm, no we, we yeah. are different we try to be like like if Lisa would try to be like Anne, you would go crazy. If I would like to be like Lisa, I would go crazy. Right. It's not happening. It's hard so to I believe that, that three billion people could all be so different, but we are or four at this point. Yeah. No, I think we we are we are totally different. I mean, and and uh, and also, and I think the struggle, and that's if you know, for young people, um, and I mean, I have this, you know, my beautiful team here. Uh, yes. in our head of a thing. So they're young people and I, I, I pray to them. I admire them. They are beautiful because they are so open. They are so pure. Many of them so pure. And that's why I think it's, it's on us who really, we have to deliver, you know, not just because we have robbed the planet. I think that's a whole situation in itself. But, but I think we... I learn from them so much and I get so much hope through young people because they're looking into their beautiful eyes like my friend Sahid. Have you met Sahid from Russia? No, no I have no. not. But, but he's so beautiful. He's 28, 29. We are so close friends. You know, I learn from him, he learns from me because there is so much wisdom in young people. And, and when I want to, if I, if I would be allowed to say something to them, which is an honor for me, this is really, really, don't listen to the world, listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, go inside, listen to the inner voice and, and, and think great of yourself, not just good. Think you're great. You're greater than great. I think those are wise words, Anne, and especially today, I, I like your opinion about the young people. I feel the same. I feel like we have things to teach each other. And it's good to listen to them and see their ways. I notice with my own children, who are in their 20s that they they just operate differently it's not wrong or right it's just different and i like their openness you know when we came out of university you were expected to have a career path lined in front of you and tick this box and take the next step and i think the route today is even more winding and for them but they're they seem to be all right with that path. And, and that's why I thought you'd be very encouraging. I, I love how you have followed your heart all along your life. 
Yeah, and that's, you know, why, why, I mean, everybody now is talking about purpose, right? And purpose, and purpose, 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 mindful purpose. and purpose. And it sounds so, um, you know, it's already such a word, which is, you know, confusing a little bit, but, but I think is if we do not find what really, why did we come here? Why did we come here? What really makes my heart tick? It may be having 15 children. It may be sewing. It may be designing. It may be painting. It may be being a business person. It may be gardening. But, or, or it may be nothing of that yet. But something which really moves my heart. I mean, if we find that, every person has that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to be heroic. You said it's more, it's more whining because there's so many choices. But and, and that makes it even more difficult. For me, it was easy. There was just one way up. Right. Well, you followed it, and here you are. When? What year did Healing Hotels begin? So officially, I mean, in my mind, you know, like, I think that, yeah, it started, the idea was a late 90s, you know, mm -hmm. I think, but really officially launched 20, 2006. So that's 15 okay. years. So when yeah. you when you started the association, how many member hotels did you have in the first year? Oh, in the first year, uh, oh, we had our beautiful friend uh, Andy Lisa from Lanzerhof saying, "Yes, I'm on," and we said, "Really? You're on? We couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe our luck. He was on." So and Ananda, so Alanza of Ananda four, five, I think in the first year we started it officially in autumn. So by the end of the year, we had four or five. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and we had, I can say that today, no money. Right. No financial backups, but we thought, what the heck, let's do this. No we one was only, in that space, right? Why not? Why not try it? Yeah, and we were just 50 something, you know, who, who, who cares? <laughs> and so I'm today, serious. how many member yeah. hotels do you have? So we, I think we are a little bit under 100, wow. 90 some. Amazing. Yeah. So and all we, over we the world, have, right? All over the world. Oh, yeah, this is, I mean, everywhere um, except Israel or um, uh, Egypt. Um, we even have places in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all over the world. Yeah, China, so, beautiful, Russia. Let's talk about Corona. Let's come back to that. And what do you think that's going to mean to the travel industry, this this pause button that we've had for the last year? Okay, so all of this has been wildly discussed and everybody has an opinion and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to offer another opinion. I, what I can offer is a personal view on things. Um, um, speaking, speaking or listening to people every day from all over the world, right? From right. All over the world, between California and China and Australia yeah. and so on, and Germany in between. It's a chaos. <laughs> it is. And Einstein said, you know, a chaos is something good because we can find something in the chaos. That's my personal belief. Mm -hmm. And I believe if we, draw conclusions from the past and project them into the future, we will mess up. Hmm. You know, the markets have been performed prior to Corona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so therefore... the markets will perform in the future. Well, I would suggest let's rethink that because I think that um, what, what my, my understanding right now, my feeling or my intuition better is that we are more confused we are more traumatized than we think we are honestly mm -hmm. i think we have more scars in our souls in our relationships and whatever than we think we have and that will time take time to uncover and to heal and that's not just one trip to whatever which is beautiful but it won't do the thing i think that that people will the, the, the audience, people who will travel, want more. They, they need more care, they need more love, they want to be better understood, they probably need more time. And I feel as the providers in the industry, we have to understand that trauma in the world. We have to think into, you know, not mental wellness. Excuse me, Lisa, you know, that, 
that's crazy. That's not what we are talking about. We are not a mental case. We are not robots. We are souls who have mm -hmm. been in a traumatic pandemic, which none of us has any history of knowing. That's a big deal. So this trauma has, you know, what, what, what we have done over the last 12 months, I have to admit, I've never worked more than the last 12 months. Amazing. Why? So many because, people have said that. Yes. Yeah, because we, we, we looked at each and everything in our company and our structure. Because so, we were given the opportunity of time. We were to given do that. the opportunity and look into this and also looking at each other. So we have done many virtual retreats, many of those, you know, people online retreats, fantastic. And they've we gotten great so feedback, by the way. People have yeah. said how wonderful they've been. They were, they were very, very beautiful for people. And and so what I think what we need to do is we need to we need to rethink our ROIs. You know, we mm -hmm. need to be more patient, offering, seeing people not as a target group, but as souls, as people, as human beings who seek help. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. And and so what we have done in the in in the, in, the, in the meantime, in the last few months, we have created a so-called healing certified signature. So okay. that our healing hotels can go out to people and say, we are healing certified. They Excellent. are a member in healing hotels. And that's what we offer now to the market and help people with our trainings, with our understanding, especially in the cities. We have launched the urban healing hotel module. I that thought that was a great idea. And not because yeah. not everyone can go to Ananda or Western Australia. Yes. You know? And we have to we have to bring life back into the cities, you know, and, and people will have to travel. So why not create a haven there? And that's what our hotels we, we currently are trained, you know, not trained, but you know, introduced to them. How can they implement better services in terms of um, really and you and I discuss this so often. Mm -hmm. You understand. I'm so happy. Otherwise, it would be difficult for us to speak. You, you, you use wellness, I use healing. But yes. in the end, we mean the same. Healing to me is, give me a moment to explain what healing to me is. I was going to ask that. you to do that. So I'm so yeah. happy you're going to take, we have two minutes left. Let's tell so, us. Okay, holistic, holistic means whole. It means whole. It means together, mm -hmm. right? So we have been traumatized. We, we, we are not together. We are confused. Holistic means nothing but in the, in the word whole. And whole is the root word for healing. That's all what it is. Body, mind, and soul bring it together. This is what we want to bring to the world. And this is what I, I pray to everyone in the industry. Please look at this first before you look at your budget sheet. Because money always comes where it's wanted. Mm -hmm. And it's wanted to support people. That's least my wish. Do you think that the healing hotel members are effective in sort of putting out that message? Like, how do we get the guests to understand what is offered beyond wellness? I think we are right now supporting them. I want to also say that uh, the, the, our partner hotels were full in the months where, we, where people could travel. Amazing. I mean, waiting list. Why? Because people said, yes, the hotels will be able to, we will help them now to also give more, more um, information in terms of, you know, using different wording because people understand different wording right now. Mm -hmm. And so we can, we can come out of the closet and say, yes, it's, we are actually people. We are not credit cards. We are people. And so we are supporting them, but I'm sure they will be able to do that. And I think I have very, very good feeling for the future for all of us. If we I agree. stop going crazy. I think that, um, of course, this was an awful thing to have happen to us as a society, but you said it earlier, we've gained time and perspective. And I think almost all of us are living our lives a little differently. And, and that's not a bad thing. It, it was good to sort of step off the treadmill and, and really look at how you use your time. And that's yeah. the message I want to leave listeners with. And from you is that how you used your time in your whole life, you followed your heart. And when you felt like the path wasn't the right one, you took a different one. You were really courageous. Thank you. Yeah, so that's th true. Thank you for leading the way for many of us. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Anne Beging from Healing Hotels of the World in Cologne. And I uh, hope you get to stay in one of those amazing properties sometime soon. I invite all of you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Big hug. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.